It's a tour you can take sitting home by yourself. It's time once more to go Jeff your shelf. Well, here we are, the last stop on the Bookshelf World Tour 2021. And, of course, I saved the best for last. Uh, this video might take four hours, but I don't give a damn. I'm going to go through all these Sun Tub books, and you're going to see them all. Anybody caught skipping ahead will be punished. I don't know how. Anyway, so I had a lot of trouble figuring out where to start because um, there's so many Sun Tubs, different levels, different things to show. And I thought, should I start with uh, with Misery? Because it's the first Sun Tup book I bought. But then, uh, I don't know. I wanted to kind of end on um, my most prized Sun Tup shelf. And I wanted to start with the Artist Gift Editions. But I don't have Misery with the Artist Gift Editions. So, a lot of, lot of you know, ins and outs and, and what have you. So, um, I decided to start with the Artist Editions. And then work around the four shelves and and probably you know like spend a week doing it so but the the nice thing about the sun tub tour is that i've unboxed every single one of these books for the channel so if you ever want to go back and and get a closer look at anything there's a video for that so you just feel free to do it anyway so these are well Let's start with the stuff in front. It's a Sun Tup mug. And look, it's a 19th edition coaster. And uh, it has coffee in it. But that's not Sun Tup coffee. Oh, that's good. That's that's for daddy. That's for beef daddy right there. All right. Then um, these are the names of the Dirty 30. I actually did write every name down. Um, if you don't know who the Dirty 30 is, don't worry. They'll tell you who they are. Um this was the very first group I did in a, uh, I had in a live chat um, before my first drop talk uh, for the fans of Sun Tup channel, and I wrote all their names down for to pick for a prize, and I wrote them down in Chicken Scratch. But I understand who they are, and here you all are, Dirty Thirty. This is a um, devil my daughter made for me. I love it handcrafted out of clay painted um and he's showing his age a little bit so he needs another paint job but i love it and i put him by the horns so he's my horns shelf candy uh, one of a kind right here one of a kind you could buy it for a million dollars that's my price that's my let go price a million dollars and then this is uh, official shelf candy by Sun Tup. This is the Oscars Speed Cube. Don't say Rubik's Cube. What, do you want to get sued? So this is the Oscars Speed Cube. Um, that's a pivotal part of the story and Let the Right One In. I don't have the numbered edition yet, and when I do, this cube will be relocated. This has my number 23 to match the book on it, and uh, Paul knew that. Uh, having the number in the cube would make it a must buy because I couldn't stand having someone else have my cube. So, territorial I am. All right, so let's get looking at the AGEs, shall we? Now, when it comes to reading Sun Tup books, these are usually the ones I read, um, the artist editions. Back in the day, they were called artist gift editions. Back in the day... Um, and those days were long ago. So, um, this is the first one. Well, the second one I got, the first one I got was, is up there and I'll, I'll show that to you in a second or in a, in a long, long, long second. So this is, uh, my first Joe Hill read. I love the book. I loved the book and this gift edition was just fantastic a fantastic way to experience it um so let me bring it in close so you could smell it can you smell that yeah that's that smells so good it smells so good so um the end papers were gorgeous like i said there's an unboxing for each and every one of these um editions that i'll share with you on this stop of the tour if you want to go in deeper on any of them I recommend it because the artist editions 
have so many things about them uh, that are worth looking at. So uh, the art inside, the dust jackets, they're the only... Um, they're the only Suntup editions that have dust jackets, except for Biblio Mysteries. The numbered edition has a jacket. Um, but the art on the DJs, the art inside, and um, what they look like when the dust jackets are removed are, are all part of um, sort of an unveiling. And if you noticed, I have mine in here um, slipcase side out because of maximum protection i mean that's that's just patrick bishop taught that to me he's like my mr miyagi um noriyuki pat marita uh pat marita so here we are um with well you know what i'm gonna move this out of the way just to give myself more room so i don't struggle in front of you all this is rosemary's baby the most limited of the print runs for artist editions only 500 of these were made it took a bit to sell out um but damn this is a fantastic edition the boards on this are spectacular this is the book i read i loved the story the story is amazing um i'm i'm sad it took me this long to discover it but i'm I glad i got to read it for the first time as a sun top edition it's a great read. Um, highly recommend. I Am Legend, another great pivotal book. Uh, it's science fiction, it's horror, it's vampire legend. Um, this was a very wonderful throwback to the paperback edition for the dust jacket. Love this story as well. Now, here's a story I love, but I have yet to read it as a sun top. Fahrenheit 451. What a great book! It is. It is uh, something that's that is. It goes beyond genre. It really gets at the heart of censorship and um, you know the American ideals of censorship. And Michael Whalen artwork for the dust jacket. GTFO. <laughs> Am I right? GTFO of here. Let the right one in. My first time reading uh, John Avita Linkvist. Link oh, I headbutted the stand. Wow, and it shook. That was not an earthquake. Uh, this was a great book. It the the subtext of this book about what defines monsters and desires and monstrous desires. I I I think the the what this book is trying to say about what a real monster is uh, is amazing you have to let the book work work through your brain and of course it has extra content uh i think it's a never before published uh short story in the let the right one universe let the right one in storyline the third short story was the first time published in this book. Great stuff. The Auctioneer. Now, I haven't read this. I plan to. I want to. I will. Just my TBR pile is substantial, and I'm spinning my wheels on the latest book I'm reading. But once I'm done with that, the world's wide open. It's going to be a Sun Tup book I read next because there's so many I have to get, catch up on, including A Scanner Darkly. I read... Philip K. Dick in college. I read The Three Stigmata of Palmer L. Eldridge. Brilliant, brilliant, mind-bending sci-fi. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this, reading more of his work. I think he's brilliant. Even though I'm not a big sci-fi reader, I am looking forward to this. And this is a limited print run of 750. So it's not quite as rare as Rosemary's Baby, but... I believe it was the first of the 750 print run for artist editions. So it's it's a little harder to find. I know a lot of people were looking for that. Starship Troopers and Stranger in a Strange Land. I had a benefactor for these two. I have fallen off the artist edition train when somebody rescued me 
got me these. Boy, am I glad. I would have hated to miss out on these. These, again, are the two I will read. I do have the numbered editions. You'll see them in a second. So I, I, would, have had, I would have had a fix. I would have gotten that into my veins. But uh, I'm glad I can take a lower dose artist edition for that trip. And then finally, so far in the artist editions published, The Exorcist, William Peter Blatty. I just did an unboxing for this one. Um, this was the first book I ever traded for with another book. I don't ever, I've, I, I don't ever engage in that sort of stuff. I either have the book and I want to keep it forever, or I sell it because I don't want it. But I'd rather have this sweet, sweet cash. Um, uh, but this I had to do because I needed The Exorcist. This, this was a mistake that I had a remedy and am I glad I did so right now currently um, with misery up on the shelf that I didn't get to show you yet I have all the artist editions published to date I have a few on pre-order including silence of the lambs and guests so there will be a few more I'll add but Right now, I am completely up to date. Could not be happier with that. I love the way they look on the shelf. All uniform height. I don't know if that geeks anybody else out. They dig that. But that, for me, when when you pr produce a set that has equal size on the shelf, I think it hangs together better. So um, the quality on these are... Oh, and there's one other one I didn't show you. It's Red Dragon, and there's a reason that's not with these. Um... But these artist editions have been a steal from day one. They continue to be worth every penny, even though they have gone up in price. The demand is still there, and they're still worth every penny. In fact, I think they're priced right now and before he was seriously giving them away. He put the gift in gift edition, and that was no joke. That was pretty literally what they were. $65 for Red Dragon why didn't I buy eight of them? I don't I don't know. At the time, I guess, and now I will tell you, because other other collectors should get those books, but man, $65. I should have at least bought one for every member of my family. And then sold them on them and made a sweet killing. So those are my artist editions, artist gift editions. Up next are my entire run of numbered editions. All right, this is where we get a little emotional, so bear with me. If I speed up, if I talk in squeals, because we're looking at my numbered shelf. Little respect. Just, just respect it a little bit. Let's start with the shelf candy. This is a moon man I got on my honeymoon in Ireland. We're in Galway. Galway is like the artist city. It's the feel-good artist heart of Ireland. And take my word for it, I'm an expert. I know everything. I've been there once, and I'm an American, so I know everything immediately, and I'm an expert on it. And I, I shamelessly will tell everybody on YouTube that Galway is the artistic heart of Ireland. And I bought this. We used to have two moon men, and then our kitchen exploded into our basement, and we hired people to clean up. And I don't know what they did with it. Because I don't know where the other one is. It's gone. It's lost to the flood. So, pity me. This is a skull I bought in New Orleans at the French market outside Café du Monde. Café du Monde. When you speak other people's languages, do it right. So when I speak French, I say Café du Monde. That means Café of the World. <laughs> little lesson for you uh, Francophiles. Um, in the eyes of this hand-painted skull, which I love, my son Ben helped me pick it out because it looked like an Attack on Titan character. If you don't know what that is, you can research. You can pause and research. I'll still be here when you get back. In the eyes, I have a pen from the Stanley. This is the hotel that uh, Stephen King, Joe Hill... And Tabitha King stayed in that inspired The Shining. I stayed there for a very bloody night, literally. And this is 
a promotional teaser that Paul had me share to announce I Am Legend, and I kept it like a greedy little bastard. I love it. It's super, super cool. And it's something that warms my heart when I think of how it's meant to be driven through a vampire's heart and tease I Am Legend. I would love to maybe get it glued to the slipcase, but I don't have the balls to deface the slipcase. Look how awesome that would look, guys. Look how awesome that would look. Maybe I gotta find an extra slipcase and glue it there. Cause that looks awesome and it fits so nice. Wow, you're seeing the wheel spin live. Live in a recorded fashion, so not live at all. I'm gonna move this skull out the way and this pen, which is, I believe, cursed. My life went completely downhill after I went to the Stanley. Everything went sideways. So it's a cursed pen. All right! Okay. Okay. Wow. So here we have the proper way to display your numbered editions, space permitting. Um, you want to put them in order of publication, but you also want to put the author by the author. So obviously the lottery did not get published right after Haunting of Hill House. But it's Shirley Jackson, and this is Shirley Jackson. So the Shirley Jackson sun tups go next to each other. Same thing with Anya Allborn. Same thing with uh, H.G. Wells. Eventually I'll have doc Dr. Moreau there. Same thing with Cormac McCarthy. Biblio Mysteries will go right around here. I don't know how wide it'll be. Bam! Cormac McCarthy. So order of publication, but author by author. That's how it goes. And you don't put your sun tups near other publishers' books. You just don't. It's just not done. That's it, not proper. That's not acceptable. This Joe Hill horns is going to stay near the sun tups. It's not going to go near my other Joe Hills. It doesn't associate with them. It's in a different league. It can't teach them how to be better books. It'll only embarrass itself. Same thing with King. It stays up here. It doesn't go by my other kings. I, I mean, I feel like this is important. This is a how to shelf, how to shelf your sun tops. If I can help you out, I will. I want your books to be happy. So this is the very first sun top I ever purchased. This is Misery, Sweet Baby Jesus. This is the f only oversized edition that sun top ever did. To my knowledge, this is huge. This is the first artist edition. Um, you can, I geek out when I unbox this on my channel. You can see that. You can go back and see it. Experience it. This is an amazing edition. This is, again, way underpriced at the time of publication. It was like $110. Just way underpriced for what Paul delivered. And, you know, a big reason why I am a sun tupper for as long as I can. Jesus. The next one, this was my first numbered edition, which is <laughs> Haunting of Hill House. It's a hard one to get. There are only 185 of these printed. I missed out on the numbered edition of Misery, which was 185. So those are the only two books in sun tup printing history that were 185 so this is this is the my beginning of the non-king numbered track um this keyhole it's really an estruchin estruchin i don't know how to call what to call it properly but it's a keyhole mine was a little off center when i got it i noticed that right away the keyhole is like a little off to the left printed it's just a little off, and you can see a little indentation line, like this whole thing is just off to the left a little bit. And it makes mine quirky. I like it. I like it like that. And then the the book itself is amazing. And of course, there's a whole unboxing dedicated to this, but I don't care. I will go through these books. Because you're you're in my you're in my house now. The end papers on this are just fantastic. You can feel them. They're just fantastic. This whole edition, fantastic. 
And, th and that began my run of number 23s right there. So the lottery is fun. I have a, a, a quirky little thing with the lottery here that you may not know about. People on the Dark Tower forum know about this. They probably roll their eyes at me like, what a suck up. I don't care. I don't care. I have no pride. I never did. So that is like my superpower. Shamelessness is my superpower. Um, what happened was I noticed that on the title page for the lottery that uh, there's, I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if it's picking up, but there's an indentation here that says the lottery, Shirley Jackson, the lottery. And I honestly asked the question on the Dark Tower forum. I asked Paul, he said, oh, that is so neat how you didn't print the name of the story, but you indented it very much like people not getting that black mark in their, in their, uh, in the story where if you didn't have the black mark, it was good thing. So he didn't put it there and he goes, no doofus. He didn't say doofus. He's a very nice guy. That's a double printing. There was a sheet of paper over this sheet of paper that got the ink. And because this was under it, it got the indentation, but it didn't get the ink. I'd be happy to exchange it. I said, no, I love that it's not marked. And it makes it even more apropos to the story. I got the one that's unmarked. Everybody else gets, well, I don't want to ruin the book for you. Don't want to ruin it. But this is just an insanely gorgeous edition. Yes, it is a short story. Yes, Paul got a lot of grief for printing a short story in a standalone edition. But with such a pivotal story that made such waves about civilization and what is a civilized society, it's important. It's an important work and deserved this treatment. And I believe the grandson of Shirley Jackson did all the art. So... It is a definitive edition. Love it. Love it. This was not... Oh, and this board is a brilliant way Paul thought about our, our shelf experience to cover the distance so you're not smashing the keyhole up against the book next to it. So I, I neglected to mention that. Then we have horns. Oh, get out of here. I, I already told you I read the artist edition, but I have this one made with anaconda snakeskin spine so shut up and then Japanese cloth boards I believe shut up with that and this is my first experience with um, an end caps a capped slip case which is like a slip case but also gives you the complete protection of a tray case and you're not feeling this at home and I pity you for that because this feels fantastic this leather so here's Rosemary's Baby, and the story with Rosemary's Baby is that at the time I just could not afford it. I had horns, this one was coming out next, I so wanted it, I drooled over it. Uh, this goat skin, beautiful, beautiful edition, signed by Chuck Polinick. I, I desperately wanted it, but I, I just, I had a pass at the time, I just did not have the money. And when Paul announced the road would be next, and with the right systems the way it is, I needed the road. I absolutely needed the road. So I went to Camelot Books to get the last copy available of Rosemary's Baby Numbered Edition. And then I emailed Kim and I said, hey, can you work with Paul and make sure I get number 23? And then I'll buy all my Sun Tup books through Camelot to ensure I continue to get number 23. Or if you can't get 23, that's fine. I just need the road and a new number, and that'll be cool. And she emailed me back. She goes, well, you are in luck. Someone really approves of you because you are getting a free copy of Rosemary's Baby. And it's, and it's going to have your number, according to Paul. I, I'll never forget that email. I, lost, I about lost my mind. I was already a fan for life. But at that point, I, I, I don't know. I, I'd never been gifted such an incredible book, such an incredibly expensive book in my world. So it, it 
solidified my place and I knew I was where I needed to be because that that was just amazing it's it's like people realized how much these books mean to the people who buy them and to come through like that when I needed it to give me that lifeline well you could see how it turned out <laughs> I still have number 23 in these clutches these clutches wow I put my hands right in the middle there is that freaky anyway so I'm not going to get choked up. I, I have a unboxing for Rosemary's Baby that you can watch. I also, the, the quirk with this one is that the, there was no number written there. I emailed Paul and Paul told me, yes, you should have the number 23 in there. I just somehow didn't write the number in there. So you can go ahead and write it in there. And I plan to do so someday with my Stanley pen. My cursed Stanley pen is what I will use to put the number 23 in that book when, when the time is right, when the time is right. So the next book, again, all along the line, I'm telling you how I feel like I'm in the right place. The Road, Paul could not have picked a more perfect book to do. The Road, just a masterpiece of fiction. And... With, tomorrow, with today being Father's Day, I think everybody should, every dad should read this book. Every son, every daughter should read this book. That's all I'll say. I, oh, I'll also say that in this book is a beautiful Easter egg Paul left for his father who passed away. All the books on the on the copyright page, and look at those mango leaf end papers. All the books on the copyright page up to the road had a letter at the bottom. Let me show it to you real quick. And this one, it's Y. I don't know if you could see that. In Misery, it was S. In Haunting of Hill House, it was O. In Horns, it was L. In Rosemary's Baby, it was L. And in this one is Y. And that spelled out the name of... Paul's father and it ends with with the perfect love letter from a father to his son in this book it's just a beautiful thing that he baked into it and the person who figured out that code that Easter egg got a free lettered edition I believe of Hill House I'm not sure what book or was it the road great contest great love letter to his father just great all around. I mean, you could argue with that, but I wouldn't recommend it. I just took a sip of coffee. That's why that was a delay. I wasn't getting choked up or anything. Brother. Brother is an amazing book. You're going to get sick of me hearing that. Uh, sick of me hearing that? I'm going to be sick of hearing that, but you're going to be sick of me saying that. Brother, Anya Allborn. This book only ever existed as a paperback I think self-published by Anya Allborn, but it was such a great read. Paul Paul decided to give it the Sun Tub treatment, and this is with walnut paper cover. I read the arc of the, no, I didn't. I actually bought the paperback. That's the only time I did it. I bought the paperback to read it before I got the book to see if it was something I would want to keep. And boy, did I love it! Love the story. The story's twisted. It's very dark. But at its heart, it talks about family and, and where we come from and how that affects us. Highly recommend it. A very affordable Suntup edition at the time. There were This was the only numbered edition to be produced at a 500 print run. Well worth it. Well, well worth it. If I reread it, I definitely will reread it as a Suntup edition. Then Seed... Another Anya Allborn book, which was not published right after Brother, but there it is on the shelf, as I explained earlier. Another dark, twisted, family-centered horror tale. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into the plot synopsis. All I will say is this is so creepy. Brother was disturbing and shocking. Seed was disturbing and creepy. Loved the story. Anya Allborn. So this is the second Anya Allborn book I've ever read. And I read it as a Suntup arc. Well worth it. The, the experience and the art come together to create just such an ex exceptional experience. So then I Am Legend. This was 
a, a, a wonderful book. I've never read it. Um, I, but this this edition took a while to sell out, probably because I helped Paul announce it and therefore cursed it. I don't know. I can't confirm that. I can neither confirm nor disconfirm that. So I've never read this one. It is a gorgeous book. Absolutely gorgeous. Highly recommend if you can ever find it. Then we have the Wells set. I bought them one at a time, or I bought the Time Machine, and then I bought Invisible Man. No, I, I did buy them one at a time. I just bought those in the same day, but separately. I know it's confusing, but you know, you're know you on this channel, so you should have been prepared. Time Machine is a brilliant book. The added material makes it even brillianter. There's a missing, there's a, a chapter that I've never read before that's published in the bonus section that is even better than the way the book originally ended. So thrilled I read it. I have not read The Invisible Man or War of the Worlds or The Island of Dr. Moreau, which isn't out yet, which will go right here as I explained in the beginning about where the authors go. Uh, but I, I really look forward. I'll probably read Island of Dr. Moreau next out of the wells and then War of the Worlds and then Invisible Man. Uh, don't hold me to that though. What are you, the book police? Fahrenheit 451. I have read this book, just not the Sun Tup edition. I will upon reread. I love this edition. I love that copper top edge stain. The artwork is beautiful. Julia Griffith, I believe. Griffin. Julia Griffin is her name. Love, love, love this production. And I love the story it contains. Biblio Mysteries. What a fun, trippy experience this was for us when uh, we first got it. It has, and you'll see that in my unboxing, this cool tray case. I haven't read this yet. The premise sounds awesome. The authors are amazing. There's so many signatures. And I, I, will, I will read it. This obviously, um, or not obviously, but there's no artist edition for this. There's no arc for this. So I will be reading the numbered edition, I believe. If you own a Suntup edition, that is how you should read it. So check out the unboxing for that. So these are my first bit of space. My space was limited to include my numbered, all my numbered editions, so I had to cut it off somewhere. And I thought Misery deserved, even though it's an artist edition, I don't have the numbered edition, so I, I thought it deserved to go up here with the numbered editions because it is a worthy book, very worthy book. I put it up there. But um, I do have more numbered editions. I'll get to those next. And I have a ton of numbered on pre-order, so you'll see that in the future book tour if if there is a future book tour so this is the remainder of my current published numbered editions all number 23 as you can see i have a lot of space a lot of space between here and there because i anticipate this shelf will get filled up with what I have on pre-order and what I may order in the future, there's going to be, oh my gosh, how many? There's going to be a Scanner Darkly, Let the Right One In, a Magica, Guests, Island of Dr. Moreau, so many books that I, that I uh, Silence of the Lambs, but it won't go here. You'll see where that will go in a minute. So, but... Enough about the pre-orders, let's talk about the shelf candy. This is Batman black and white statue uh, designed, drawn by Mike Mignola and sculpted by, I don't know, somebody else. So it's designed by Mike Mignola. I don't remember who the sculptor is. But I love, love, love this statue. It is the first edition. Um, they they re-released it with um, a different chest emblem so this is the one to get there's a very very thin rope line here that i'm terrified of breaking uh love this statue so i i used to collect comic books batman's my guy 
So my favorite Batman statue gets prominent placement up here on the Sun Tub shelf. And of course, I have all this space, so I might as well fill it with joy. Big Lebowski's my favorite movie. It's genius. Love it. I have the Funko Pops. I have this this the the replica, the 164th model of the dude's car. I got a Hobby Lobby for super cheap. It's like five bucks. That cracks me up. Love it. Got the 15th anniversary edition movie that comes in the bowling ball case. It's limited to 50,000. <laughs> That's funny. I have the, the VHS cassette tape just for decoration. I don't own a VHS player currently because I'm, I'm not in the 80s. Then the soundtrack. The soundtrack's brilliant as well. That's my Big Lebowski Shrine, which will get displaced as Suntub takes the space. So let's look at the books. I'm so paranoid about scratching the, the case for 1984 that before I move it, I have to slide over all other books to get to it. <laughs> oh, oh, you just oh, almost had a heart attack. Even though nothing really would have happened, I almost had a heart attack. Here it is. This is among my top, most favorite Sun Tup editions. Comes in, in a clear acrylic um, blue case with hand painted boards. There's a video showing how these boards were painted. This is a fantastic, gorgeous production. Just, just amazing. You can see my unboxing for this book, but it really doesn't capture how much I love this book. This is among the, the top of what Suntup has produced, in my opinion. Of what I own. I don't own... I, I own one lettered edition, so I'd imagine he's outdone that with the lettered editions, but... As far as number goes, that's that's top. The Auctioneer, love this production. Haven't, again, read the book. I will read the artist edition. The boards are very similar to Seed, which is like a press board with, with um, materials locally sourced in the US. Unboxing for this, you can check out. Is the first one that with this flat spine. Looks cool in the case. I didn't think I would like a flat spine. Oh, I realize I'm a little off center. Uh, I didn't. I didn't realize I would like that because I usually love that rounded spine. But it looks cool when you put it in the case. This is the most well among the most limited edition. Well, this is the most limited numbered edition Suntup has produced. It's a book of prose poetry by Charles Simic. And I got number 23. There were only 150 of these published. The, these poems, usually not my thing, are brilliant. Loved it. Loved the last. My favorite is the last poem in the book. My secret identity is the window. The door is open. The, oh, my gosh. I had it. I had it known. But now i got to show you. I love this poem. Aha, uh -huh, yes. My secret identity is the room is empty. And the window is open. Love that. Love it. Wonderful book of poetry. Absurd, crazy, thought provoking. Wonderful. Then the Heinlein set Starship Troopers, Stranger in a Strange Land. Printed, the boards are printed letterpress. I, again, have an unboxing for this, so you could check that out. These are number 23s. Beautiful books. I've never read Heinlein. I will. I will read the artist editions at some point. Beautiful, big, beautiful, wonderfully beautiful, wonderful, beautiful books. So, again, that rounds out my numbered editions, except for Red Dragon, which is right below here. And you'll see why in a second. Why did... Red Dragon numbered and artist not make it to these shelves. You'll see why with my most 
specialist sun top shelf of the sun top shelves which I'll show you right now Woo! here it is my final sun top shelf I have four shelves for sun top books this is my last one very pleased to share it with you and actually have an excuse to handle these books again let's go through the shelf candy this is a silence of the lambs little wine glass i don't know what you know it's for alcohol because you know that's why we invented glassware to give us alcohol so yeah, i got this from nocturnal readers box it has a death head moth and it said a census taker tried to test me it's a famous line from the book and the movie. Um, the rest of that line is different between the book and the movie, so it's fun that it's left off so it doesn't favor one over the other. And inside that glass, I have a one-of-a-kind clay sheep my daughter made for me. Again, I keep pleading with her to open up an Etsy store to sell her shelf candy. And maybe call it shelf candy. I don't know. Man, I'm not I'm not doing justice here for this. Oh, that's a little that's a little blown out. It's a it's a fantastic, fantastic sheep. Take my word for it. Then the dragon lord. My is my sidekick, my partner in the unboxings. This is the stand I have it precariously balanced on. Just balanced. The stand did not come with the knife. It's not affiliated with the knife. It was just a cool dragon stand when we looked up dragon stands. This is a Gil Hibbins fantasy knife from 1996. It came with the sheath. Definitely something you could buy on eBay for a modest price. Mine is scarred up from all the books, etc. One of my favorite things about the knife is this skull splitter. So if you have this in your hand, you can split someone's skull open. So that's nice, it's fun. Never thought you'd talk about splitting a skull on a bookshelf tour, did ya? Did ya? Okay, all right, let's get the stand out of the way. The stand, it's a great book. So, put that somewheres out the way. Here we have Drop Talk. These are my cue cards for the Drop Talk. There will be one next, uh, one this week, because this is Sunday. And so Thursday, I will be doing a Drop Talk. New Sun Top book this week. I will be counting it down with you on the Fans of Sun Top Facebook page. So get over there. I'll let you in, and you can, you can be part of that. This is a $10 bill. We were going through uh, old things. My wife had old birthday cards from when she was when she was young, and this was in a card from her grandmother, and it sat in the box for 29 years. We finally opened it, so there it is. Remember when America used to have currency? Then this is a uh, better currency. This is a 19th edition uh, Thomas Harris bookmark this is red dragon on this side and silence of the lambs on this side so i have it over here usually by my red dragons oh did you say red dragon oh yes you did so the reason all my red dragons are on the shelf is because this is the only book i own every edition of lucky me because it is probably the one book i would want to own all the editions of Red Dragon is a fantastic work of fiction that reads like true crime. It's an amazing accomplishment and well worthy of all the acclaim it gets. Of course, the sequel is Silence of the Lambs and then Hannibal and Hannibal Rising. I haven't read Hannibal or Hannibal Rising, but I have read Red Dragon a few times and Silence of the Lambs once. Amazing stuff and Suntup did them justice. We'll start with the Ark. I have a slipcase made for me by 19th edition. 
which is just a wonderful this feels like of course dragon scales and here is the arc inside uh, because that's what you do with slipcases. You shove books in them. You don't just buy slipcases. You shove a book in there. You cram it in the hole. And so here is the arc. This is what I read. This is how I reread Red Dragon after all the years. And <laughs> the binding, the, the laminate started coming off. So I'm glad I got a slipcase to further reduce the damage, but does that irk me? That irks me. Irks me like Urkel. And uh, if you don't know who Urkel is, then you're younger than me, probably. Which is, chances are, I've looked at my audience data, and chances are you're younger than me. So, Urkel uh, was an actor, uh, was, was a character. It's neither here nor there. Then the artist edition... $65 for this. I bet you you could buy, buy the slipcase for $65. Oh, but look, there's a free book inside. And it's a Thomas Harris book with Jason Mowry art. Now, Jason Mowry volunteered, well, didn't volunteer, but he agreed to do remarks for the books. Any edition of the book you could send to him and he would remark or... He would do it on a book on a, a piece of acid free paper that you could then uh, tip into your copy of the book. Either way, I sent him the book. He's not far from where I live. And he sent it back with with this piece of artwork in there. So this is the only edition with this piece of art from Jason Maori in it. Oh my god. Oh my God. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So the value of this book, well, for me, it, I just wouldn't sell it, but wow. Wow. Woo, woo. All right, the numbered edition. Shut the hell up. Huh? As with all these, I have unboxings for each. But the numbered edition, that Japanese paper changes, uh, it just looks, changes in the sun, you know. I mean, look at that sun in the light. It really reflects the light really well. Gorgeous artwork. Beautiful end papers. My number 23 to match all my other numbered editions. But, you know, it stays on this shelf. This is where it stays. And then the lettered edition, the only lettered edition I own. Uh, I keep it on the shelf without the Mahjong enclose, uh, uh, capture or enclosure in effect. Obviously, because I don't want this to bump up against that book. If I could, I would display it on a stand by itself. But, wow, it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing that I never thought I would own. Inside is the book with um, alligator skin or hornback. It's it's like a it's a caiman or an alligator. I looked it up once. I looked it up once. I can't express how amazing this book is to feel, to look at. The texture of the paper is is mind blowing. Um, you know, it kind of makes you lost for words. Even somebody who never shuts up like me, I can't define it for you other than to hand you the book and say, "See." But it is just. I, I never thought I would own it, or e I never thought I would even hold it, but I did an unboxing for it, so you could see that it was a total gift from Paul that I just still can't get over. I mean, if anything, Paul is amazingly generous with with the books if you watch his facebook live videos you will just by 
your participation be entered into contests for free arcs, for free numbered editions. He'll, he'll give away some uh, gift cards, things like that. He just loves to spread the joy. I mean, that's what got him into this game in the first place. It's a business. He needs to turn a profit. He needs to, to pay the bills. But I think more than that, the biggest reward is the joy that these pieces bring. And if you're in the community, you understand that these aren't just pieces of entertainment or pieces of art. These are experiences, and they just fill us with joy. Amazing joy. So, to wrap it up, these are the arcs. Now, it's it's funny because arcs are not for sale. Uh, you 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 can't come by them usually uh, via an order form, of course. But. Uh, so you might be wondering why is it last on the thing you know why wouldn't it be before the artist gift editions or the numbers but because they are so rare and so hard to come by i put them next to my my special shelf with the red dragon set uh, i treasure these i will read them if i if there is no artist edition but i would rather not read them i'd rather keep them very in, in pristine shape. I love having them. I love seeing this collection grow. Um, the last one Paul did was The Wolfin. That's a book that's, oh, not even out yet, numbered or um, artist. And so um, I, I have, I'll probably read it. I don't know if, when, but I will get around to it. This is a, a gift that Paul gave every customer who bought five things direct from Suntup. And in the back of this book, he printed all our names. I did an unboxing for this too. But wow, that, I mean, this is a free gift to customers. And they were buying books because they love the books. And then they get another book on top of it. Just amazing. Just amazing. And then we have Brother and Seed. Look at that artwork. Look at that artwork. And I'm messing them all up. Fahrenheit 451. 1984, I'll be getting the artist edition for this soon. The numbered edition is amazing. Let the right one in. Auctioneer, Extra Assistant, Wolfen. So, this is the only book, Sun Tup book, you haven't seen the cover for. Whitley Stryber's Wolfen, a book I've always wanted to read. Thrilled to have Paul force my hand and read it now. So, those are my Sun Tups. I don't know how long this is going to be once I assemble it, but it's going to be worth every minute. I'll probably watch this video again. I don't watch my videos over again. You know that? I don't. Because that guy is annoying. But this one I probably will. So thanks for sticking around. This concludes my 2021 book bookshelf tour. When I do move and I have a new library, I probably will do a new, new bookshelf tour with books that are i have a pre-order list that has a few on there so i guarantee there's some coming so this will be something i can update for y'all and there are books i couldn't even show you there's i got a couple of centipede press books that didn't fit on the shelf i have some other uh cemetery dance books that didn't fit on the shelf so uh, i can maybe expand my bookshelf real estate and share it with you and a future date so you can you know geek out with me then so and i get to do this all over <laughs> so anyway see you around and stay frosty well that was a borderline illegal amount of fun wasn't it if you want to have more fun borderline legal check out this other video or subscribe or don't <laughs>